Can you talk a little bit about what it's like protecting digital assets on such a large scale? I mean, I know you said it's 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 fun and it's rewarding and you you do it for free anyway and stuff like that. But like, what is, what are some of the sort of like surprising things about the job or or just like the scope of it or or, or is it just another like you just just punch in and go okay, I gotta gotta save them from you know <laughs> large scale yeah. cyber attack. Well, I don't want people to think I would do this for free. No, uh, no. no. <laughs> I got a roof no, over there. We're, we're not discussing salary today. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, so I mentioned before some of the things that really uh, are appealing to me about security, the, the mission orientation, the fact that it requires you to continually to improve your skills. And I think that's true about pretty much – everybody that I think is credible in the security community. Um, and I'm, I hate to say it, but I, I put that word credible in there intentionally because I think there, there is a little bit of snake oil that is floating around the security industry. But if you disregard the, you know, the charlatans, the people who are the real practitioners, the ones who are publishing research and giving talks and are the, like the, the authorities and the, you know, there's so many like that. Um, those people are all similarly driven to solve problems and to make things better and to uh, do the thing that they've been told is impossible. And I love that. I think that's so incredible. And I can tell you a story even. Please. We published this, uh, this research recently that let me, let me set the context with a metaphor, right? So, okay. okay, let's say you go to the beach, right? And you bend over, you pick up a grain of sand and you throw it back. And then the next day, I go back to that same beach and I pick up a grain of sand, you know, any grain of sand. Now, what's the likelihood that I pick up your grain of sand? Mm-hmm. Right? It's, it's pretty, pretty unlikely. Pretty slim. Now, if you multiply that by like every beach on earth and multiply that by, I don't know, a gazillion earths, mm-hmm. that gives you sort of a scale of what cryptographers might call statistical improbability. And Statistical improbability is what protects cryptocurrency wallets. It basically means that private keys, the the thing that actually enables someone to lock or unlock a cryptocurrency wallet, they can't be predicted. But the question is, or can they? Mm. And so we published security research that was focused on Ethereum wallets where we found we could actually predict the key successfully 732 times. Now, that's like picking up your exact same grain of sand on those gazillion earths 732 times. It shouldn't be possible wow. once, yep. let alone hundreds of times. And so that begets obviously the next question, which is, okay, well, how much money are we talking about here? And because it's cryptocurrencies are built on the blockchain, you can actually look at the transactions and see how much money is in each wallet. And it turns out it was a considerable amount, about a, a little over $54 million worth of Ethereum across all these different wallets. Mm-hmm. So then the next question is, okay, well, what's happening with that money? I mean, if, if weak keys are protecting these wallets, that's like cash is sitting on the sidewalk. Someone's going to steal that eventually, right? Yeah. And, and someone, someone did. All 732 wallets had all been funneled to a single destination wallet. So clearly someone had found the same flaw that our research had discovered and was exploiting it. And then we wanted to see how fast do these wallets get looted? So we took a dollar's worth of our own Ethereum. We put it into one of these vulnerable wallets and I mean, snap your fingers. Mm-hmm. And that's how fast our money was gone, you know, in wow. this uh, transferred to the central wallet. And I tell that story about this thief that we, you know, nicknamed the blockchain bandit when Wired wrote this big expose about it. I tell that story because that's the kind of stuff that really inspires those of us in the ethical hacking community, that's what really inspires security researchers yeah. because stuff like that, it's not supposed to work that way. And yet a story like that, it, it conveys two points really powerfully. Uh, the first point is that vulnerabilities exist. And the second point is that attackers exploit them. And all that we need as security professionals is that crystal clear almost mandate that says these things exist vulnerabilities exist and attackers exploit them this is not a job this is not punching the clock this is a mission yeah and that's what gets me really fired up about security 
New episodes of Cyberwork are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to claim your free month of InfoSec skills. Sign up using the code CYBERWORK and you'll get unlimited access to hundreds of courses, hands-on labs, certification practice exams, skills assessments, and more. Use code CYBERWORK for InfoSec skills.